Hey guys, what's happening? This is Peter Virak here. I hope you're having an awesome day. In today's episode, we're going to be taking extreme stag macro shots of a beautiful beetle, or actually two. Uh, one that I found on the windowsill just at home, and the other one was a dead specimen that I stumbled upon at the local reserve. I'm just going to briefly talk a little bit about the gear or the equipment that I'll be using. I've got the Gizzo tripod right there, and on top of that, by an Arca Swiss type plate, I have the extremely budget version of a macro rail which is from newer the four-way macro rail and on top of that i have the canon atd which is an aps-c sensor and cropped sensor camera gets me a little bit closer to my subject because of the 1.6 crop factor i have my cable release here that is super handy just to minimize motion and the camera shake we definitely don't want to introduce any camera shake we want to avoid it at all costs this specimen stage is kind of a transitional uh, solution. I put a piece of white paper on this uh, cardboard or fasten it uh, with uh, duct tape. That's where the specimen is uh, staying right there. And uh, this is gonna be the first uh, time I shoot with a white background. So hopefully it will work out. For lighting, I have the two loom cubes on each side at around the 45 degree angle just to light the subject uh, evenly from each direction. For diffusion, I'll be using this bonnet type diffuser from Crafty Bells. I leave a link down below so you can check out their products. They are a small business, but they have pretty good uh, products. And I actually have three of these diffusers and uh, I really love them. This translucent um, fabric creates a beautiful diffusion. I highly recommend it. The specimen is already right there super tiny unfortunately i couldn't uh, really make it look as appealing as i wanted it to be because the legs are a little bit curled up that's one of the biggest disadvantages of trying to capture a dead specimen because once they are dead they tend to curl up and um, this rigor mortis or whatever it's called kicks in and uh, it's extremely difficult to you know rearrange the limbs unless you put them in some sort of solution that uh, makes them more flexible but it's too fiddly and I don't have the time or the patience right now. Let's switch on the camera and the light as well. We are two. It has 10 different settings and I'm, I usually use it at uh, two or three. I don't want to bump it up to 10 because it just overheats. Let's switch on live view and manual mode. ISO needs to be base level which is 100 i believe the aperture is already set yeah to f4 f4 is my preferred aperture i'm gonna just lower the shutter speed to five seconds so i can actually see what i'm looking at so i need to move this down a little bit Okay, I got my subject right there. By the way, we will be shooting at 3.5x, I believe. Mm, in case I don't have enough space around the subject, I might lower it to 3x magnification. I'm just gonna align the subject now. I'm moving on the y-axis on the manual rail. And yeah, I think we'll have to. I'm just gonna try to move it a little bit further away. And readjust the magnification ratio to just three. As I said, we want to make sure that we leave plenty of space around the subject because in post, once it's stacked, those separate layers are stacked, then artifacting can happen usually around the edges, mainly at the bottom of the frame and uh, we need to crop that out. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look too appealing, unfortunately. It looks dead, <laughs> but I wanted to capture this species. I really love the iridescent color of it. It's a bit of a specular highlight because I have this massive soft box on the left side, but I really don't care. I'm not gonna bother with it. Where shall I move this? I'm just experimenting little bit i'm gonna move it a little bit further away from the diffusion layer i'm gonna take a text exposure and let's try one second 1.6 seconds first it's gonna wait a little bit 
because it's still shaking a little bit. I can see some movement. Well, let me check the histogram. Definitely about one second would be more optimal, I think. Let's take the second shot, second attempt. Here we go. It's gonna be one second exposure at F4 and the ISO is gonna be 100. I'm not sure how many images we'll be taking, but probably in the range of 40 to 50, I'd say. We need to overshoot just to make sure that we cover every single focal plane. I explained that in another video, so please check out the 12 tips and tricks on how to take super sharp extreme macro shots. Um, I think some of those tips you might find useful even in the field when you are out shooting, not only using a manual macro such as this. So you can see that's the specimen. And if we move in and out, get it in focus. Hopefully, maybe I should move a little bit to this side. That's gonna be better. All right, let's start taking the shots. One second exposure. Using a manual macro can be very time consuming and you definitely need to be super patient, but I absolutely love it. It just motivates me and makes me more engaged. Such a pity that I couldn't stage it properly. It looks a bit awkward. The main reason why I chose this subject is because of its beautiful metallic uh, blue color of its exoskeleton. We finished. I ended up taking 88 shots in total. And I'm just gonna go through them and see if the specimen moved at all. Hopefully it didn't. The white looks rather nice. Creates a nice separation from the subject. So we finished with the first subject, the first specimen, which is a beautiful blue beetle. And I've got a second one in my little plastic container and I'm gonna set that up, but I won't be showing you guys that sequence of shots. I'll probably be using the exact same exposure settings. Thanks again guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and find some pieces of information useful. If you have any feedback then please leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you straight away. See you in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.